it's David and Brian from VM Blog, and we're here in San Diego. And we're covering the KubeCon uh, Cloud Native 2019 conference, and here's some of the highlights from the show. here at KubeCon 2019 in San Diego, and we've stopped by to visit Laceworks. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Yeah, uh, I'm Vikram Kapoor. I'm co-founder and CTO at Lacework. Uh, we are over here demoing our product, uh, Lacework product, which is basically a cloud security product, where it's a only integrated, fully integrated platform today, which solves uh, customers, you know, security needs going all the way from compliance to breach detection uh, to governance uh, across from like you know cloud APIs, uh, configuration resources to uh, uh, to VMs and host IDS and file integrity monitoring to VM container vulnerabilities to Kubernetes APIs and uh, compliance and IDS. And uh, how do you fit into the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem and? What problems does uh, Laceworks solve? Yeah, so we are actually a complementary product to Kubernetes. Uh, we sit on top of Kubernetes and we help our customers who are running on Kubernetes to secure it. Uh, people running Kubernetes will either they run managed Kubernetes or they run like you know their own VMs and uh, mostly in the cloud, mostly like you know AWS, GCP, or Azure, right? Or sometimes on VMware. Uh, across these tech stacks, it's very hard to uh, secure it because it's very hard to get visibility into the environment and. Uh, many times the security and the DevOps teams are have like different goals. So what we do is like we help people, as I said, across the board uh, as a platform and automated breach detection, but also bridge the gap between DevOps and and uh, security, so that they can be on the same page and they can understand the context of the alert and they can talk about pods and applications versus IPs and ports, and essentially help like both sides of the team uh, be able to like secure their environment. Uh, and so we're kind of complementary. Uh, tool which help people running Kubernetes uh, to secure it. And um, also, I understand you had some announcements around the show. Yeah. Can you share those with us? Yeah, so we recently announced an integration with Datadog. Uh, Datadog is a very popular mon uh, metrics uh, monitoring tool, mm -hmm. and now we are able to send our alerts and our metrics to Datadog. And again, that helps bridge the gap from security to DevOps, where DevOps, in their view, in the metrics tools, can look at all the VMs that have risks, or they can look at VMs which have vulnerabilities, or they can look at the alerts and the context of the host and everything, and then take action based on that. So it again bridges the gap from security to DevOps and be able to bring them to the table to have a common platform and a language. And lastly, uh, do you have a demo that we can take a look at? Yeah, definitely. So Ryan is going to be the, doing the demo today. Uh, I'll be very happy to show you the demo. Great. So what are you going to show us? Today I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the visibility uh, and security that we can help achieve in a, in a Kubernetes environment as well as uh, any other on-prem or, or, or cloud environment you may deploy into. Great. So we were fundamentally found around the ethos that security in the cloud is a big data problem and that's only compounded itself with the adoption of more microservices and orchestration like Kubernetes. And so we're a big data engine. We're designed around the ability to ingest huge quantities of data and make sense of it and provide visibility into everything that's happening in your environment. <clears throat> so as you can see here, over the last three days, I've ingested nearly 30 million pieces of raw data. And from that, I apply our, our uh, ML to, uh, to create behaviors, which I then map into this, into this polygraph I'm about to show you here. So I can look back at any point over the last six months, and I can see kind of how many clusters I had running, the pods available, the containers out there, as well as every pod that I had deployed over any single hour over the last six months. So I can look back to Thursday, uh, the 22nd of October, and at 5 a.m., I can show you exactly what, uh, what pods I had deployed and their communication paths to any other pods. I can then do freeform filtering and search to understand a little bit more about some of the exposure I have. So if I want to see any, uh, any pod that accepted a connection from an external IP, I can quite easily apply that filter up top and look at all the communication paths from there. As I apply filters, the data below also gets filtered. So I am able to show you quite a lot more about 
uh, the communication paths and potential risks that you may have in your environment. So if we scroll down here, I can show you all the clusters that are deployed, the namespace as well as the pods that are out there, the activity and all of the active containers, as well as some of the ports that are available. So I, I expose all the information that you need from a visibility perspective in order to inform better security choices, as well as understand just the ephemeral nature of pods. Something was running for 30 minutes, six months ago, I can tell you exactly what it was, what it did, and, and, and who was accessing it. From there, we use this information to inform intrusion detection as well as build time security. So here's an example of a, of a detection that we may, have, uh, we may have captured in a customer environment where we can see an application it's running on a host as, a, as user Ubuntu connected over SSH to another host as user root. We then expose all the details around who, what, why, when, and where, as well as the behavior that we map, mapped as anomalous. So if I look through this really quickly, I can see, okay, root was involved on both hosts. You know, I can see the CPU utilization was relatively low, so I'm not kind of worried about a crypto miner of some sort here. I do see a whole bunch of SSH connections being kicked off, as well as the polygraph here of the single behavior that we model as anomalous. So I can see here somebody logged in from Cupertino, California, kicked off a bash session where they were associated with the user Ubuntu. They then ran sudo su, got a new bash session where they were root. This is one of the uniqueness uh, or unique features of Lacework is we're able to track identity back to the original source and understand who people actually are. Where they then launched Hydra, which spawned four daughter Hydra processes and 292 SSH connections. If I scroll down to the raw data exposed here, you know I can get a pretty good idea of exactly what happened here. Hydra-L usernames, text, tell me and password list top 500, IP SSH. This is quite obviously some sort of a brute forcing attack. Some something trying to get, uh, capture some passwords in my environment. Right. On the build time side of the house, one of the most important things to do is understand the vulnerabilities in your environment or in your infrastructure, as well as the attack vectors and any risk that they pose to your infrastructure. So here we can see I've got you know, 59 vulnerabilities captured within this repository. And if I look at any one of these, I can get information around kind of the description, the attack vector as shown here, the complexity. And then if I scroll over, I can see both the, the current version that I have deployed that's vulnerable, as well as a fix if available. I can use this data to inform all sorts of automated build processes around you know, breaking builds that have critical vulns, but allowing them if they don't have a fix out, things like that. Really can do a lot to help us, uh, to help us improve our security posture over time. This is just a little bit of what Lacework is able to do from a visibility and security perspective within a Kubernetes environment. And we're able to do this no matter where it's deployed. So if you're deployed on-prem, AWS, Azure, GCP, we're gonna have the same level of visibility across all the infrastructures. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. And where can our uh, visitors go if they want to find out more about Lacework? Sure. Thank you for having me. So lacework.net is uh, is the best place to get in contact with us, and uh, we're more than happy to to come by and, and meet you guys and uh, and walk you through what we can do for you. Great. Thank you.